untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white flicker deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a ton of new cards from Jumpstart, Historic Horizons, and one of those is Soul Herder. The only reason we're playing blue in this deck, a 3-mana 1-1 spirit, saying whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield, put a plus on plus one counter on Soul Herder, and at the beginning of your end step you may exile another target creature you control, and then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control, also known as flickering or blinking one of our creatures, and Soul Herder combines very nicely with creatures that have powerful enter the battlefield abilities, and there's no shortage of those in the deck. In fact, most of them appear at 3 mana, which is also the reason why we went with an 80 card Yorion deck, so we could fit all these cards into the deck, and of course Yorion as companion, also very synergistic in a deck with a lot of enter the battlefield abilities and various flicker shenanigans. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, one of the best creatures to flicker with Soul Herder, and our other blink effects is a Blade Splicer, also from Jumpstart Historic Horizons, a 3 mana 1 1 that when it enters a battlefield creates a 3 3 colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature token, and then Blade Splicer also says Golems you control have first strike. And so flickering Blade Splicer will generate additional 3 3 tokens that all have first strike. Then we also have Elite Spellbinder, another staple in these white flicker decks, a 3-1 flyer that when it enters a battlefield lets us take a look at the opponent's hand, and we can exile a non-land card from it, and for as long as that card remains exiled, the opponent can play it at an increased cost of 2 generic mana. Also a great card to have in the Tibbal's Trickery matchups, where we can exile Throws of Chaos to make it too more expensive, which usually buys us enough time to kill the opponent in the meantime. And then we also have the full playset of Skyclave Apparition as one of the main removal spells in the deck, a 2-2 spirit that when it enters the battlefield can exile up to one target to non-land, non-token permanent we don't control with mana value 4 or less, and when the apparition leaves the battlefield, the opponent gets an XX blue illusion creature token in return, where X was the mana value of the exiled card. And then another exciting addition from Jumpstart is a Restoration Angel at 4 mana, a 3-4 Angel with Flash and Flying, so we can play it at instant speed, and when it enters the battlefield we can flicker one of our non-angel creatures, so another great way to re-enable enter the battlefield abilities. And then Restoration Angel also helps us disguise our two copies of Settler Wreckage, since we can pass a turn with a bunch of our mana up, and the opponent doesn't know for sure if we're holding Settler Wreckage or Restoration Angel, or maybe planning to activate Castle Ardenville or sacrifice a clue token with Thraben Inspector, so lots of ways to spend our mana at instant speed, and Settler Wreckage can be a complete blowout, especially with Soul Herder in play, which will then pick up a ton of plus one plus one counters, exiling all attacking creatures target player controls, and the opponent then gets to search for as many basic lands as creatures that got exiled and put them on the battlefield tapped. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana, full placed of Thraben Inspector as a nice 1-2 that when it enters the battlefield lets us investigate, so we get to generate a clue token which we can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card. Then we've got two copies of Stonebinders Familiar, a 1-1 one -one saying whenever one or more cards are put into exile during our turn, we can put a plus on plus one counter on Familiar, only triggers once each turn sadly, so we don't get to do as many shenanigans as with Soul Herder, but the upside of Familiar is that it also works with our Elite Spellbinder, so if we exile a card from the opponent's hand, that will also grow the Familiar, unlike the Soul Herder which specifically requires a creature to be exiled. Then we also have the full playset of Portable Hole as a great removal spell, can take care of early creatures like Lanor Elves, and then later in the game we can potentially flicker it with Yorion to get rid of larger creatures, maybe even tokens that we generated with Skyclave Apparition. And then the full playset of Ephemerate, a 1 mana instant with Rebound, so we get to replay it at the beginning of our next upkeep for free, and it's essentially a way to flicker one of our creatures, so great to maybe play on turn 4 alongside one of our powerful 3 drops with an Enter Battlefield ability, can also be used to save one of our creatures from removal. Then at 2 mana, full playset of Charming Prince, a 2-2 that when it enters a battlefield lets us choose between 3 different modes, we can either scry 2, gain 3 life, or we can flicker one of our creatures and return it to the battlefield at the beginning of our next end step, so we can do some fun things like potentially flickering our Charming Prince with Soul Herder, and then Charming Prince can flicker one of our other creatures, can also be used to save our creatures from sweeper effects, since the timing works out in such a way that sometimes we can return cards at the beginning of the next end step, so fun things we can do with Yorion as well, set up some sort of loops where we can flicker all our cards every other turn, 
So there's a lot of interesting shenanigans that can come up. And of course, while flickering all those creatures, Soul Herder also picks up more plus one plus one counters. Then we've got two copies of Professor of Symbology, a 2-1 that when it enters the battlefield lets us learn. So outside of Yurion in the sideboard we have six other lessons we can learn for, including Academic Probation, Sciences to find a land and gain to, Reduce to Memory as removal, and then both Teachings and Introduction to Prophecy for card draw, and finally Mascot Exhibition as an extra win condition. The reason we're not playing Fibblethip at 2 mana is that it's a bit of a nombo with Ephemerate. If we were to target it, it would get shuffled back into our deck instead of drawing extra cards. And then we also have the full playset of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. No flicker synergy, but just a good card in a deck that doesn't have many non-creature spells. And also another great tool to have in the Tibal's Trickery matchup, making both Throws of Chaos and Tibal's Trickery more expensive. So it delays the combo by a few turns. And then a 2-1 first strike, also not a bad creature. And then we've already discussed all the other cards in our deck, going over the mana base. Plenty of dual lands with four copies of a Glacial Fortress, Hallowed Fountain and the Blue-White Pathway. And two copies of Irrigated Farmland also counts as a Plains and Island for Glacial Fortress and can be cycled for two mana. And then two copies of Field of Ruin to take care of opposing creature lands or other utility lands. And then we've got four islands, ten planes, and four copies of Castle Ardenvale as an extra mana sink to generate 1-1 one -one tokens in the late game. And then of course we can't forget about Yurion, which has a great synergy in our deck as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Got a 1-2-3 curve, can even flicker a Thraben Inspector if we want. Up against an aggressive green deck featuring turn 1 Pelt Collector, so... Probably Gruel Aggro. And Blade Splicer plus Ephemerate is a pretty good combo in this matchup, making a bunch of 3 3 first ranking golems. Opponent off to a fast start with turn 2 Burning Tree, although no follow up at least. So, probably fine to Charming Prince. I could Flicker Inspector to get an extra clue, although I think gaining 3 is going to be more valuable in this matchup. Could also decide to scry to make sure we find land 4, so I can maybe turn 3 Spellbinder, turn 4 Splicer plus Ephemerate. Yeah, I don't hate that idea, given that they weren't off to a blazing start. I think we can afford to, and then Soul Herder seems like a fine follow-up. And I'm okay trading Charming Prince if the opponent offers. Right, Spellbreaker. 3-3 three, three hastes, so we could double block. Spellbreaker is also effective against Elder Wreckage if we ever draw it, since it gives the opponent hexproof. So I could double block Spellbreaker here. Or we could double block Pelt Collector in case the opponent can make it even larger later. Yeah, maybe that's better here. If they play Bone Crusher or Questing Beast, they could easily grow the Pelt Collector. And then I think I still wait on Splicer until I can Ephemerate, and then for now I will Spellbinder to check out their hands, maybe snipe a Collected Company. They do have Questing Beast, another Spellbreaker and Crasher, so pretty good hand. Let's make that Questing Beast more expensive. And then... Probably gonna see the Crasher here. I'll happily trade Spellbinder for a Spellbreaker. Even if it means taking a bit more Trample damage. That was the advantage of trading for Spellbreaker as opposed to Pelt Collector last turn. So... Yeah, I'll trade for Spellbreaker, take a bunch of Trample. And then I'll have to take two if I want to Blade Splicer keep up Ephemerates but that might be worth it. Alternatively, I can Spellbinder again and make their Crasher more expensive, play Tap Lands. Maybe that's still the play. Although if they draw an untapped land, they can still play the Crasher, prevent Spellbinder from blocking. Yeah, that's probably too bad. So let's go with a Splicer Ephemerate line instead. The upside of waiting is that they might go for Crasher, prevent your 3-3 from blocking, and then we get to ambush them. Downside of waiting is if they picked up a Bone Crusher, they could stomp Splicer in response. Alright, opponent runs out Crasher. 
probably going to see an exert on the golem, and then this should be pretty effective. So we get to ambush the spellbreaker, and then probably just chump crasher take two, or I could chump so we're not in Ramana Perun's range. Although this will require two more red sources from the opponents, so it's pretty unlikely for them to activate it anytime soon. And keeping Splicer with the Soul Herder is pretty valuable, so I think I go to two here. And then we get to Flicker Splicer again. And this way we get to apply a lot of pressure right away. Another Soul Herder, so do we want a Spellbinder to check out her hand? or Soul Herder. We're dead to a stomp either way. Preventing a company or another questing beast could both be relevant. But if they had a questing beast they probably would have played it over Crasher. I think I still like the uh, Soul Herder line which will probably apply the quickest clock. Alright, let's see for dead. Just a scavenging ooze, that's acceptable. Can grow up to a 4-4. Four, four. Plenty of creatures in the graveyard. But Blade Splicer is just gonna take over here and her opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand needs a little bit of help. Any creature with a good enter the battlefield ability will do. Our hand's a little redundant here with double ephemerate and soul herder, and a familiar doesn't do much by itself. So it has potential, but if we don't draw one of those two or three mana creatures with a good ATB effect, we're probably going to be in trouble. We also don't have any interaction, and we're on the draw, so I think this is a mulligan, unfortunately. Alright, this is a little bit better. And then probably bottom pathway. And then fountain enables both copies of Glacial Fortress. Alright, up against the red burn deck, so the life gain of Charming Prince can be quite useful. Turn to Steamkin, we want an Apparition as soon as we can. For now, gaining three is fine. And then the second Charming Prince, we can maybe Ephemerate and uh, leverage a little bit more. If this trades for Lava Runner, I'm pretty happy. They're pretty likely to have two 1-mana spells to grow this up to a 3-3, or they might just have a Pump spell here. We'll see. Infuriate, maybe. Nope, just a Lightning Strike. Alright, so we soaked up one damage from the Lava Runner. And Spellbinder, I think we still need to Apparition the Steamkin, especially since our opponent's struggling with only two lands. Although I fully expect Apparition to die, but that's okay. Pyromancer puts us to 18, and the light of the stage, although they've already played land for the turn. They did reveal Bone Crusher, which we cannot target with a Spellbinder, but we can keep up Ephemerates if they try and kill one of our creatures here. So let's Spellbinder anyway. And then Chandra or another Lava Runner. Let's make Chandra more expensive. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. And we'll eventually have to find a win condition here, although I guess Spellbinder can start chipping in as our opponent tries to stomp, and we get to fizzle the Bone Crusher too here. It's a pretty good value play. Make Lava Runner more expensive, so they maybe should have played that first. And our opponent attacks, so could trade Apparition. I'm not gonna flicker it anytime soon. Opponent gets a replacement 2-2. So I guess it doesn't really help much. Yeah, I'll take it. 
and then could flicker apparition to exile one of the opponent's creatures, which could be relevant if they have cards like Wizard's Lightning and they end up with fewer wizards in play. Although, there's no real reason to flicker anything if I'm planning to attack instead. So we'll decline. Portable Hole is great. Probably exile Lava Runner here. And then I could destroy the Ramanap Ruins and still play Charming Prince. And gaining three seems fine. Still have Yorion to flicker everything else. Take four. Can put Yorion in hand. And then... Probably want to attack with a Charming Prince, because that's a creature I actively want to flicker with Yorion. If I attack with all, it's only 7 damage, so not quite a 2 turn clock. And keeping a 2 2 back means we can block one of the elementals. So this seems fine. Can also flicker a portable hole for what it's worth, which is why I didn't exile the Pyromancer in case it comes back into play. Alright, Wizard's Lightning, pretty effective here. Means we're taking at least six. Plus two from Chandra is eight. Chandra, you need more control. Oh, don't worry. I we can take out Chandra. And then flickering portable hole could get rid of the illusion token. Which I guess is fine. In case we want to flicker the hole once again later. So we'll attack. And then Charming Prince, I think, is just gonna gain three. Could go with a Yorion Loop, but I think I want access to more blocking creatures. So let's just gain three. And get rid of the token, so we don't have to worry about Portable Hole giving the opponents anything back later. Alright, go to six. We've got good blocks available, and a couple clue tokens we can still sacrifice for card advantage. So don't hate our position. Now I'm fine trading now that we got our value off Yorion. Skyclave Apparition's good. And there we go. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an okay hand. Can use this cry from Charming Prince to hit our land drops as well as Professor can learn for environmental sciences. Opponent took a double mulligan, so this could be a Tibble's Trickery deck, in which case Spellbinder is one of our key cards in the matchup, Thalia being the other one. And yeah, Temple of Abandon also points towards a Trickery deck. So let's cry and hope to hit a land here, because I probably need to play Spellbinder next turn already. Otherwise it's going to be too late. Alright, keep both of those. And then we just want to apply as much pressure as possible to kill the opponent before they can cast a 6 mana Throws of Chaos. And yeah, there's the Throws of Chaos, opponent also playing Extinction Event. Although missing black mana. Alright, so the fastest clock probably comes with Blade Splicer being flickered a bunch. Although we could also go with Restoration Angel in the opponent's draw step, flickering Spellbinder in case they top decked another Throws of Chaos. That's probably the safest play overall. 
So wait for their draw step. And then flick our Spellbinder. And worst case scenario, we just uh, make the extinction event more expensive. Alright, Ritual of Soot is going to be more difficult to cast an extinction event. Opponent misses their land drop, so they won't be casting their Throws of Chaos anytime soon. And now we get to have some fun with our Soul Herder. Can flicker either Charming Prince or I guess Restoration Angel also works. Then flicker the other one that we didn't blink to begin with. And eventually end up flickering the Elite Spellbinder to have another look. All while Soul Herder picks up more and more plus one plus one counters. And yeah, opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand could use an extra land, but it is quite promising here with Double Blade Splicer, Spellbinder, some of our better cards. And a Professor can always get Environmental Sciences to help hit our land drops. Let's see what we're up against. So if we don't find a land, our play pattern could be turn 3, cast the Environmental Sciences plus Portable Hole. Which is still okay. Mountain into Faithless Looting. And our opponent discarding Dragonstorm. So it looks to be a Dragonstorm combo deck. Which is why Spellbinder is going to be pretty important for us here. Could also decide to discard a card from our hand since Settler Wreckage is probably not going to be incredibly useful. And then hope to naturally draw into a land, which would be better for our curve, since probably not casting Portable Hole either. Yeah, I guess that's fine, because I really want a third land next turn, so we can start applying pressure. So between Portable Hole and Cellular Wreckage, I think both are probably not gonna be relevant here, but I guess we'll get rid of Settle. Alright, picked up Hallowed Fountain, that's good. And then next turn, most likely gonna play Spellbinder, but we'll see. Ooh, Thalia is also great. So let's start by attacking. And then... Hmm. What could our opponent be holding? Not sure. Spellbinder is still the more mana efficient play for now, I think. Alright, Prismari Command makes sense, solve the equation to find the missing combo piece, which is going to be Mystic's Mastery. So between Prismari Command and solve the equation, which one do we take? Command can kill one of our creatures while digging, solve the equation just gets the Mystic's Mastery. Hmm. Yeah, I think... It might be Prismari Command, since the opponent also has a bunch of cards in hand that aren't very useful for them. And I don't want them killing my Spellbinder or Thalia. If we find a Flicker effect, we can Flicker Spellbinder to make the Mystic's Mastery more expensive. They could flashback Looting too, but they're just going to solve the equation for Mastery. Which we can make more expensive, or now Soul Herder can Flicker Spellbinder, that's perfect. And then Thalia afterwards will make it essentially cost 7 mana for the Mastery. So that worked out pretty well. Flashback looting. And Thalia should be the final nail in the coffin here. Probably no reason to field of ruin anything. I guess her opponent could be light on basic lands, so maybe they're out of basics. And then flicker spellbinder again. Alright, so unless a top deck Mystic Mastery, we should be fine.
All right, looks like they're dead. And our opponent packs it in. So yeah, got to see the value of Thali on Spellbinder once again against these combo decks. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Charming Prince probably gonna scry to look for something like Soul Herder, Restoration Angel. Blade Splicer would be good too. Got a portable hole and apparition for interaction, so we're well set up for creature matchups. This is a circumstance for being on the draw with portable hole. Turn one could have been slightly better. But a turn two Charming Prince still fine. Picked up a Restoration Angel. Still gonna scry here. And Blade Splicer is excellent, so we can curve Splicer into Restoration Angel, which is a classic curve which used to be good in modern. Aspirant, fine target for either one of our removal spells. Although I think we can wait on killing the Aspirants. Get this Blade Splicer in play first. So green-white, maybe plus one counter synergy deck with hardened skills. Soul Herder also great, so now we get to portable hold plus Soul Herder, which seems good. And then Restoration Angel is going to be a great follow-up. Maybe a Collected Company can save them, and that's most likely what they have at the ready here. So we could get ambushed if our opponent hits something like Lovestruck Beasts to block our 3-3 tokens. Although they are somewhat expendable. So it's probably fine to still attack with the 3-3s three at least. And then hopefully they don't hit double Lovestruck Beast. And there's a company. It's gonna be Lovestruck Beast plus Mammoth. So they get to ambush one of the golems. That happens. And I think we pass here. Flicker Blade Splicer, and then I can flicker Charming Prince with Restoration Angel, which will then flicker Blade Splicer to grow the Soul Herder even more. Want to make sure to do that before the end step so we get our creatures back from Charming Prince. Ooh, another company? That's scary. All right, opponent gets to have a look and target something with Apparition, but we can use Restoration Angel to uh, save whatever they try in Exile, which is going to be Soul Herder. So Restoration Angel, Flicker, Charming Prince, Flicker, Soul Herder, or we can just Flicker, Soul Herder to begin with, since it's going to lose all its counters anyway. And uh, yeah, that works. They get to make something more expensive. And yeah, those back-to-back -back companies have definitely helped them back into the game. But our opponent still packs it in since we have the skies covered with Restoration Angel and Soul Herder is just such a value engine that if the opponent doesn't have something like the Great Henge to keep up and draw more cards, they're gonna eventually fall behind. And yeah, opponent decides to pack it in here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is pretty good against any creature strategy with familiar and then two removal spells to grow it. Not the most exciting hands if we're up against something else. I'll try it. So, wouldn't mind seeing a turn one 
creature we can exile with portable hole. So I welcome all Lenor elves. It's gonna be a Thoughtseize, probably taking Apparition instead. So it looks to be a more grindy matchup where having three Banan Spectres is nice. So this is a matchup where finding Soul Herder, Ephemerate, those are all great cards and there's Ephemerate off the top. Carrier Thrall, wasn't even aware this card was legal, 2-1 that leaves behind a Scion token. Alright, so probably fine to portable hole exile that. Grow the familiar, sadly familiar also besides only getting one counter per turn, only grows during our turn, so flickering Inspector in the opponent's turn is not going to give us an extra counter, but we can just sacrifice the clue instead. Unless the opponent has another discard spell. Silver Wreckage could also come in handy. So, what's the play here? Can attack with a familiar? And grow it at instant speed to trade for Aetherborn by flickering Inspector. And then we can play a second Inspector in case they kill the first one, so we still have a target for Ephemerate, and then we get to crack a clue. Still not entirely sure what the opponent's playing. I guess it could be a Vampire Synergy deck. And yeah, I was about to say Immerster Imperator is a Vampire Dragon, which would explain the addition of reds in their deck. Now we do have a lot of ways to exile the Predator, even though it can become indestructible. Seldor Wreckage, of course, one of them. So, could put Yorion in hand, play Thalia. Probably too soon to keep up Settled Wreckage. They could have a claim the Firstborn to steal my creature and sack it to the Predator. Opponents hovering over a portable hole, maybe points towards a Colligan's command. To destroy an artifact and dealing two damage. Who knows? And yeah, there it is. Portable hold down, Thalia's dead, opponent's got her thrall back. Well, we can still generate a lot of value with Yorion, flickering both inspectors, making a lot of clue tokens. Cordial Vampire into Murder Strider killing Yurion. Alright, opponent's pulling pretty far ahead now, so we are gonna need to sell the Rankage to be good. Could double block the Thrall, which would be a fine block on the surface. Sure, soak up some damage. So I can crack a clue and still settle. Maybe make it look like we're gonna activate Castle Ardenville. Helps us disguise or settle. Another predator? Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. Even after settle.
Opponent gets two more lanes. I guess they're out of basics. Alright, so let's go digging for some answers. Skyclave Apparition would be the cleanest one. Alright, so looks like we're gonna crack another clue, Cycle Farmlands. I guess we can still do this first. Alright. A lot of land so far. Thought sees to have a look. They can take my portable hole. Alright, so I've got two draw steps to find an answer. It's not looking great. Soul Herder can flicker Inspector to crack an extra clue. And a land, so. I guess we're hoping for like a Restoration Angel or another Settler Wreckage of the clue token. So we don't have high hopes. Yeah, so ended up flooding a little bit. But still got to see some cool synergies in action. Opponent attacks. And let's see what we get. Stonebinder's familiar, not gonna cut it here. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Good 1-2-3 curve. Bit of disruption against combo decks. And a good board presence in a creature matchup. A Radiant Fountain pointing towards either Colorless Ramp or... I've seen it played in the Tibble's Trickery decks as well. So we've got good tools for both matchups here. Turn to Thalia. Could potentially be countered by Tibble's Trickery if they have one in hand. But resolves. And Spellbinder next turn is going to be hard to beat for them. Even drew another one. There's a Throws of Chaos. The rest of their hand is a bunch of garbage. And yeah, there we go. So. If you're looking for a deck that's good against Tibble's Trickery, just make sure you've got four Thalias and four Spellbinders, and you should be fine. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Kick things off with our Thraben Inspector. And then turn two. We'll see if we want a Charming Prince or crack a clue. I guess we'll scry with the Charming Prince, look for one of our more impactful creatures. Professor of Symbology, Ephemerate. Both of those are okay, but not amazing. We can probably get enough value out of Ephemerate that it's worth keeping. Hmm. Nah, I think I bought them both. I really want to find, like, a Soul Herder. Blade Splice or Restoration Angel, that sort of thing. Alright, Thalia. We don't really care about, and there's a Soul Herder, perfect. So, let's get the party started. And then we can flicker Charming Prince, which will in turn exile the Thraben Inspector, so we pick up more counters on Soul Herder. Skyclave gets rid of Soul Herder. Let's 
still got a nice bit of card advantage here from both clue tokens. And then now I could Apparition, although Thalia means we can double spell. If I Apparition Thalia, of course, Portable Hole doesn't have a target anymore. So what's the play? Could just put Yurion in hand or sack two clues, maybe that's better. Aspirants. So it looks like a green-white company deck. Counter goes on Thalia. And our opponent may be respecting Restoration Angel and not attacking. Well, we could play another Thalia to make opposing collected companies even more expensive too. Not really planning to cast Seldor Wreckage anytime soon. I could portable hole the Aspirant first. Another Aspirants, probably going into the Portable Hole as well. And then we can eventually break the board stall with Yorion flying over. If their last card is a Company or a Great Henge, we could still be in trouble. But for now I think it's Hold Aspirants, put Yorion in hand. And then we'll take a bit of a hit from the Mammoth. Archon's fine. Ooh, Blade Splicer is exciting. So I guess we want to apparition the Archon first so we can double spell. And this Yorion is going to be great. And then we've got the Charming Prince Yorion loop for infinite value. Probably no need to flicker portable hole, so just these three will do. Could also flicker Apparition. Yeah, I guess there's some fun things we could do that way as well. And then we'll flicker Yorion again. And Exile. Maybe start with the Lenor Elves and work our way up. Scavenging Ooze. Although all the graveyards are empty. Here on Exiles, Charming Prince, Thraben Inspector, and our opponent sees a writing on the wall and packs it in. Just too much value to overcome, showing off the value of Yorion in the deck as companion. So yeah, we got to see our blue-white flicker deck do its thing, and the addition of Soul Herder, of course, makes Archetype much better than before. Blade Splicer, another very important addition from Jumpstart Historic Horizons. 
could even experiment with some other cards like Moldrifter, which is a lot of fun if you can flicker it with Ephemerate, four mana, and uh, draw four cards essentially, get to keep your Moldrifter and then draw two more cards afterwards, although it might be a little bit too slow for Historic, although maybe a good sideboard option for those grindy matchups. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.